So scientific notation is pretty random, and it was invented, kind of like the name implies, for writing science numbers. So like, you know, if I'm a molecular biologist and I'm studying bacteria, and I decide that there's like, you know, 17 like petrillion bacteria, and I'm like writing a big paper, a research paper, I don't want to write 17 and a bunch of zeros over and over. It's like takes up too much space. So they invented this thing called scientific notation. And actually, it's pretty straightforward. There's, a, there's laws about how to do it. It's like a man-made thing. And the first thing you have to know is scientific notation is always, 100% of the time, a one digit, then a dot, a decimal, and then whatever, times 10 to the something, OK? So like if you're on like a multiple choice, like on the SATs, right away, if it said 0.34 times 10 to the sixth, that is not scientific notation. It has to be a whole number, I'll give an example, you know, 3.15, has to be a whole number than a digit, right? I mean, excuse me, decimal. This one, no whole number, decimal starts before the number, totally wrong, right? Similarly, this is wrong, right? They might be like, okay, oh, okay, <coughs> let's see, 65.23 times 10 to the 11th. Again, automatically wrong, there's two whole numbers before the decimal. So that's like rule number one, for some random reason when they invented it, whole number, decimal, and then whatever, okay? Now, the other thing about the, the uh, notation, I've heard people teach it like, okay, like, you know, if you move the decimal to the left, this is negative, to the right, it's positive, all that's confusing. This is the, the fastest, easiest way to understand this exponent. If you have a huge number, right, like a manillion, this is a positive <coughs> number, the exponent. If you have a tiny number, like 0 0.00000000005, that's a tiny number. You don't want that much money, right? You don't want $0.0005. If it's a tiny number, this is a negative exponent, right? So let me give you an example. And they go like, you know, you can do them in both directions. So let's say they had like 3, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And they said, put this in scientific no notation. What you don't do is count the zeros. That's like a total myth. You take the numbers that are not zeros and you write them in the form with the decimal. Done, right? I have a whole number, decimal, <laughs> and then the 6. It's not 0.36, it's not 36, it's 3.6. Now, without thinking, you write times 10 to the, now this is empty. Now, looking up, is this a huge number or a tiny number, right? Because it's huge, this is a positive exponent. And now, what is that exponent? Here's what you do. You put your little pen, your little orange pen, where the decimal is now. Oh, but... I don't understand. There is no decimal. If there's no decimal, remember, it's at the end. So put your pen on the end, and you count to get to where you want to be. We want it to end up after the three. One, two, three, four, five, six places. That's a six. 3.6 times 10 to the six is the scientific notation for this. Right? I made sense. Don't lie. OK, let's do another example. Let's do a tiny number, right? OK, now you have, let's see, point zero 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 two nine five again before you even start you're going to write two point nine five times ten to the something why two point nine five whole number then a decimal right now we know before we start ryan said that if it's a tiny number which it is this is a negative i'm just going to put a negative in there now right and now we want the decimal to end up here right after the two so let's get it there one two three four, five, six places. So it's 2.95 times 10 to the negative six because it's tiny. It makes sense, right? So this is pretty easy. I'll show you like the reverse and then we'll call it a day because you're getting kind of tired of this math lesson. I feel like I've never met anyone that loves math to be totally honest, unless it's a math teacher and then like they just like it because they're good at it and they like to show off in front of their friends. All right, <clears throat> so let's say they said convert this into a you know standard notation right not so it's already in scientific notation i want it in normal notation you'd write 3.5 and then you'd move it five places this tells you how many places to move one two three four five right and by the way i kind of didn't explain so my final answer is three hundred and fifty thousand. i didn't explain how i knew to go that way you should actually just get it wrong and then check since I moved it that way, it resulted in a, in a huge number. Is that right? Yeah, we were supposed to have a huge number because that's positive. Let's say I screwed up. 
Because I hate when they're like, oh, just don't forget to move left or right. That's too confusing. Okay, so let's say I screwed up 3.5 and I move it five places. So I'm like, okay, you know, I got this. One, two, three, four, five. And I fill the empty spots with zeros. So I say, oh, look, you know, teacher, I like did really, really good work. There's my answer. Check back with this and say, wait a minute, that's totally wrong. This is a tiny decimal and that was a positive exponent, so I screwed up. And then move it the other way, right? I'll do one more and then we're done, Zos. Okay, so check this out. Same thing, what if they say 2.4 times 10 to the negative six? I know I better end up with a tiny number, so I write my 2.4. And if I move six this way, that's cool. But that would be a giant number, so I'm, I could make, I could do that, get it wrong, and then erase it. But I know I want a tiny number, so I'm going to go this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Decimal, boom, 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 boom. Done. That's totally it. Your answer is that. So scientific notation is easy. It's just a weird man-made thing, and they have like their rules that they decided on, and you have to follow the rules, and you're done. But this is really common for like standardized testing. So that's it. And remember, if you're struggling with this at your local high school, you can take it online at Silicon Valley High School and the credits will be transferred back to your school.